formal invitation to me. I also express my sincere thanks to Ms. Bandana Basu, Central Librarian, Ms. Joytali Ghosh. Sir, sorry for interrupting. Sir, जो आप मतलब YouTube पर live session कर रहे हो वो audible नहीं है. You can talk with organizers, not with me. Uh, Dr. Ghosh. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Someone yeah, we're looking on it. Yeah, audible we're looking on it. You? Okay, okay. Yes, so I am continuing. Yeah. Uh, I also express my sincere thanks to Miss Bandana Basu, Central Librarian of the University, Mrs. Choiti Ghosh, Assistant Librarian, and finally Dr. Somnath Ghosh, Head, Department of Allied Health Science, Brainware University, for their organizing role. In this webinar, I shall give you an overall idea or overview of COVID-19 and its pandemic status. But before I start my actual talk, please give me just two minutes of time for making my PowerPoint slides ready for presentation. Till then, please stand by. I am making my slides ready. Start presenting, allow. Finding out the file. This ad does not go in Google Meet. Just a few seconds more, the ad has gone. Paying our webinars. Paying our webinars. I hope all of you can see the first slide. Yes, sir. Can see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I continue. COVID-19 means coronavirus disease 2019. Yes, now, why this adjective 19 in the name? The disease is called COVID-19 because it was first identified in November 2019 in Wuhan city of Hubei states of China. At present, the disease has assumed a pandemic status, means the disease has spread all over the world. Remember, we call a disease a pandemic when it spreads in many countries or all over the world at the same time. While we call a disease epidemic, when it spreads within a single country or state or area. Let us have a look at different pandemics that are well marked in the history of the world. You can see I have put red rectangles around some lines. The upper one, it, you can see a cholera pandemic continued for a very long time from 1817 to 1923 and snatched the lives of more than 1 million or 10 lakh people all over the world. Then Spanish flu pandemic occurred during 1918 and 1919. It is the deadliest in the world history. Infected an estimated 500 million or 50 crores of people worldwide. 
about one third of the planet's population at that time. We are talking about 1918-19. And killed more than 40 million or four crores of the victims, including about 6,75,000 Americans. Then AIDS pandemic started in 1981 and continues still now. Death toll due to AIDS lies somewhat in between 2.5 to 3.5 crore or 25 to 35 million. And finally, this COVID-19 pandemic or COVID-19 began its journey in late 2019 and has now assumed a pandemic status and has already snatched 10 lakh lives worldwide in the last eight months. Let us see the pandemic status of COVID-19. World Health Organization, or WHO, reported on 3rd September that 215 countries and territories, out of a total number of 251, had been affected by COVID-19. Here is the global picture found on 22nd September or just seven days back from today when I prepared these PowerPoint slides. The total number of COVID-19 cases reached 31.5 million or 3.15 crore on 22nd September. Today is 29th, so it is a story of just seven days back from today. 3.15 crore worldwide. The highest number of cases is found in the United States. The number was 70.5 lakh on the same date. The second highest number has been recorded, all of you know, in India. The number was 55.6 lakh on the same date. Today, just today, the total number of cases has reached 3.35 crore worldwide. 73.6 lakh in the United States. And 61.4 lakh in India. Brazil remains third and Russia holds the fourth place in the world. Interestingly, in China, where the disease was first identified on 17th November 2019, the number of COVID positive cases has reached just above 85,000 till date. Now, what is the Indian scenario? The First COVID-19 case was detected on January 30, January 30 in Trishur of Kerala. After two months, that is on April 1, the number became 1834. And after January or after eight months, the number has already crossed 61.4 lakh today and is likely to reach reach 63 lakh by the end of September, that is by tomorrow midnight. Unfortunately, India is likely to cross United States by the end of October. It is an assumption. 
by the end of October, the total number of COVID cases may be above 85 lakh in the country. Fortunately, however, the total number of recovered cases went up to 51 lakh by today, or almost 83%. And the death rate became just 1.5% at the fag end of this September. The virus that causes COVID-19 is technically known as SARS coronavirus 2, SARS CoV 2, or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. The virus is ordinarily called as 2019 NCOV or 2019 novel coronavirus, although we colloquially call it simply coronavirus and uh, by this time it is no more novel it is uh, uh, almost nine months old in the globe the virus is called coronavirus because the virus looks somewhat like a crown under the electron microscope latin corona means crown in bengali crown means mukut the virus bears an adjective, novel, with its name, not N-O-B-E-L. Alfred Nobel is the person who uh, funded for Nobel Prize, but this is novel, N-O-B-E-L, means new. The term novel has been added to its name because the genomic sequence of this virus has been known to differ from that of other coronaviruses attacking humans. In this sense, it is novel or new. At the center of each virus, there is an RNA molecule associated with a protein called N protein. Along the periphery or circumference of each virus, there is a lipid envelope in which different kinds of protein molecules remain embedded. These proteins are known as M protein, HE protein, E protein, and spike protein, respectively. It is the spike protein with which the virus binds to the cells in human body. In fact, Two other types of coronavirus had already caused two pandemics in this world. The first such pandemic is known as SARS pandemic or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome pandemic. It started, it also started rather in China and also in November but in 2002 and then spread in 2003 to different countries and snatched a few hundred lives. The death toll was not so high. A second pandemic known to be caused by a coronavirus is Mars pandemic or camel flu pandemic or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome pandemic. It began in Saudi Arabia in 2015 and is then continuing still now to spread sporadically to different Middle East countries as well as Europe and America, snatching some 11,000 lives Till now. In January 2020, a large group of scientists led by Professor Rojan Lu of Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention analyzed the genomic sequences and spike protein structure 
of SARS coronavirus, MERS coronavirus, as well as this novel coronavirus. They found about 50% similarity between the genomic sequences of novel coronavirus and MERS coronavirus. But these two viruses were found to bind to different receptors on human cell surface by the help of their spike protein. Novel coronavirus binds to ACE2 receptor or angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor, ACE2 receptor <coughs> on human cells. But MERS coronavirus binds to CD26 receptors on human cells. On the other hand, to only 21% similarity exists between the genomes of novel coronavirus and SARS coronavirus. But both of them bind to ACE2 receptors on human cells due to marked similarity between the receptor binding domain of their spike proteins. Therefore, this novel coronavirus has been given the technical name SARS coronavirus 2, whereas the previous one is SARS coronavirus 1 or simply SARS coronavirus. Now, let us note the sim symptoms of COVID 19. All of you know everything by this time, but it is a sort of revision lecture. Because the more you know, the more you forget. The cardinal symptoms or chief symptoms of COVID-19 are fever about 100.4 degree, not 104, but 100.4 degrees four degree Fahrenheit or 38 degree centigrade. Number two, dry cough with or without sore throat. Number three, difficulty of breathing. I repeat, fever above 100.4 degrees centigrade, dry cough with or without sore throat, difficulty of breathing. And fever comes first. Generally, fever comes first. Not always, but most of the times. Sometimes additional symptoms like muscle pain or body ache, anosmia or loss of smell, diarrhea, headache, nausea or vomiting may accompany the cardinal symptoms. Now, how to distinguish between COVID-19 and influenza and, and common cold? Remember, Shortness of breath is a cardinal sign of COVID-19, but breathing difficulty is not found in influenza and common cold. Number two, stuffy nose or blocked nose and sneezing, or rather with and without sneezing, are two cardinal symptoms of common cold. These are not found in COVID-19. And body ache, headache, and exhaustion are much more severe in case of influenza or flu as compared to those in COVID-19. Analysis of genomic sequences of bat coronavirus and human novel coronavirus by molecular biologists indicated much similarity between the two. Such findings led molecular biologists to infer that human novel coronavirus probably originated in course of evolution from bat coronavirus in the remote past and was subsequently transmitted to human hosts 
human host, probably through an intermediate host, like the pangolin. Now, how does novel coronavirus bind to human cells by its spike protein? Molecular immunologists have reported that, at first, an extrinsic protease, excuse me, having water. Oh, yeah. Molecular immunologist reports that uh, initially an extrinsic protease lying proteolytic enzyme protease lying on human cell membranes called TMPRSS2 causes activation of the spike protein. Violet color, you can see TMPRSS2, a protease lying on human cell membrane, activates the spike protein on the surface of novel coronavirus. And only then the spike protein of novel coronavirus can bind to ACE2 receptors on human cell surface. You already know, and Dr. Shobhnath Ghosh also told at the beginning, how the novel coronavirus spreads from infected persons to uninfected persons. I just repeat, infection can spread through the droplets, that is, cough or mucus coming out from the nose or mouth during sneezing and coughing. Uninfected people can also contract the virus from infected people while traveling in public vehicles without taking uh, proper protections. Public vehicles like train, metro rail, bus, auto rickshaw, etc. Then uninfected people can contract the virus from infected people while the both are going to the same market or shopping mall or shop or public gatherings like meetings, marriage party, etc. without taking appropriate precautionary measures. Remember the incubation period of COVID-19 uh, virus, the coronavirus, ranges from 1 to 14 days. Therefore, one may acquire the infection even from an apparently asymptomatic but actually infected person. Moreover, everyone should remain careful while coming in contact with various fomites or surfaces contaminated by the droplets of people infected with novel coronavirus. Researchers state that novel coronavirus can exist in active state on paper, ordinary paper or tissue paper for three hours, <coughs> on copper for four hours, on cardboard, for 24 hours, on wood and cloth for two days, on stainless steel for two to three days, on plastic for three days, on glass for four days, and on the outer surface of nitrile made surgical mask for four or five days. It is now held by experts that novel coronavirus can exist in active form for three hours or even more, slightly more, and can travel a distance of three or four feet through air in the form of aerosol or finest particles suspended in air. 
remember novel coronavirus particles are just 120 nanometers in diameter. During sneezing or coughing, droplets scatter in the air like a gas cloud in which many of the virus particles remain suspended. CDC, or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, USA, warns that a distance of six feet should be maintained in between two people in order to prevent the spread of novel coronavirus. <clears throat> Now, one question. Can coronavirus spread via the currency notes, paper currency notes, and coins? Quite earlier, scientists succeeded to detect the presence of influenza virus on paper-made currency notes and herpes virus on coins, metallic coins. Therefore, the possibility of adherence of novel coronavirus to currency notes and metal coins cannot be completely ruled out. It can be mentioned in this connection that, number one, novel coronavirus has already been known to exist in active state on papers for three hours <clears throat> and on copper for four hours and on stainless steel for two or three days. Now, Indian currency notes are made up of papers, unlike the plastic notes of Australia, New Zealand, Canada, UK, etc. And Moreover, the one and two rupee coins of our country contain stainless steel, while the ten rupee coin contains copper, looking like an annulus, a ring shaped copper you have seen on the coin. As such, the possibility of survival of novel coronavirus for at least a short while on currency notes and metal coins cannot be turned down. World Health Organization is now urging people to avoid using cash wherever they can and instead make contactless payments to avoid the spread of novel coronavirus. The correct diagnosis of COVID-19 is made by RT-PCR or reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. Throat swab or nasopharyngeal swab or sputum sample is collected from a person suspected to be COVID positive. Then RT-PCR is carried out. This method utilizes reverse transcription to obtain DNA followed by polymerase chain reaction to amplify that DNA, creating enough DNA to be analyzed. Coronaviral RNA will hybridize with the strands of such DNA. RT-PCR can thereby detect novel coronavirus infection, and this virus contains only RNA but no DNA. Now, coming precisely to the treatment of COVID-19, symptomatic treatment or treatment against symptoms found is given with a few well-known drugs. Paracetamol is given to control fever. It reduces body temperature by acting on the thermoregulatory center in the hypothalamus of brain. Ibuprofen is given to reduce body ache. It acts by suppressing the biosynthesis of certain prostaglandins 
which otherwise would cause pain by stimulating the pain nerve endings. Again, an antibiotic, azithromycin, is frequently given to check secondary bacterial infections in the respiratory tract. It acts by binding to the 50S or large subunit of bacterial ribosomes and thereby inhibiting protein synthesis by the bacteria. Moreover, Monte Lucas, commonly known as Montec, is frequently used to control shortness of breath. Monte Lucas blocks the action of leukotriene receptors of lungs. This in turn stimulates the relaxation of smooth muscles in the walls of bronchioles and bronchi of lungs so that they can easily get dilated to facilitate breathing. Another drug, theophyrin, is also used as a bronchodilator. Theophyllin inhibits certain phosphodiesterase enzymes, which increases cyclic GMP level in smooth muscles and thereby facilitates relaxation of smooth muscles in the walls of bronchioles and uh, bronchi. Another drug, dexamethasone, here it is commonly known as decadron. A few months back, Oxford medical researchers have reported that dexamethasone also alleviates, also removes shortness of breath in COVID-19 patients. It is a synthetic corticosteroid. In one hand, it prevents inflammation or damage in the virus-infected lung tissues by inhibiting prostaglandin biosynthesis. On the other hand, it blocks, just like Montelukas, leukotriene receptors in the lungs. This in turn stimulates the relaxation of smooth muscles in the walls of bronchi and bronchioles so that they can easily get dilated and breathing is assisted. Then targeted treatment or direct control of viral load in the body of a patient is also attempted in severe conditions. Although no specific antiviral drug is known so far to eliminate novel coronavirus from the body. An anti-malarial drug, hydroxychloroquine, is widely used in several countries, especially in India, Brazil, South Africa. It is helped to prevent the activation of the spike protein of novel coronavirus by inhibiting TMPRSS2 which is a protease that I talked about. It lies on human cell membranes. As a result, novel coronavirus cannot bind to ACE2 receptors on human cell surface in absence of activation of its spike protein. An antiretroviral drug Cabipiravir, <coughs> it was originally produced or invented in 2014 in Japan to control influenza virus, is known to significantly slow down the multiplication of novel coronavirus. This drug actually inhibits the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme of the virus and thereby slows down the multiplication of the virus. In many patients, 
dopinavir, ritonavir, etc., anti-HIV drugs have been reported to give good results. These are viral protease inhibitors, which prevent formation of viral proteins from nascent polyproteins. Another retroviral drug, remdesivir, also significantly reduces the multiplication of novel coronavirus. It interferes with the action of RNA-dependent RNA polymerase and thereby causes a decrease or uh, 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 slowing down in the rate of viral RNA production. Treatment with antibody is another choice of treatment. Plasma is collected from already treated and cured COVID-19 patients. This plasma contains antibody against novel coronavirus. Such plasma has been found to be useful in controlling the symptoms in uh, some uh, patients in different countries, including India. However, plasma donors are not so easily or not so frequently available. Moreover, ABO compatibility, uh, matching between ABO blood groups, between the recipient and the donor must be checked before any plasma transfusion is started. Netherlands and Israel produced, claimed that they have produced monoclonal antibody against spike protein of NCOB, novel coronavirus, and they claim that such antibody will be able to inactivate novel coronavirus. But such claims were made from in vitro studies only. Adequate clinical trials are awaited to confirm the therapeutic efficiency or efficacy of such monoclonal antibody. Old people are more susceptible to COVID-19. Regression of thymus gland. Thymus gland produces the T lymphocytes. Regression of thymus in old age may be an important cause of this uh, phenomenon. At birth, Thymus gland weighs 10 to 15 gram. It enlarges up to 30 to 40 gram at puberty. <coughs> but it starts to undergo regression, involution from middle age, after 45 years of age. And after 60 years of age, the weight of the thymus goes down to 10 gram or even less. Consequently, T cell production decreases at old age. And killing of virus infected cells is also reduced, and daughter viruses can merrily or happily infect new and newer host cells. Further, T and B cell interaction is also reduced. When the number of T cells <laughs> when the number of T cells get decreased, consequently the production of antibodies is decreased in old age. Interestingly, you see the uh, slide: more men dying of COVID nineteen than women. Interestingly, in different countries like France, Iran, China, Portugal, Spain, Germany, Italy, Denmark, researchers have noted that the number of male patients dying of COVID-19 was much higher than the number of female patients dying of COVID-19. For instance, the ratio of male deaths and female deaths from COVID-19 was 58 is to 42 in France, 64 is to 36 in China, 
almost 2 is to 1. And 71 is to 29. 2.5, almost 2.5 is to 1 in both Italy and Denmark. In fact, body cells of women have a much higher quantity of TLR7, the product of a X-linked gene, which this gene escapes heterochromatinization during doses compensation. Most of the genes of X chromosome of women get inactivated, but this gene happens to be an exception. It escapes heterochromatinization and remains active in double dose in women. Women have two X chromosomes, so this gene is also present in double dose. TLR7 is an immune sensor capable of detecting single-stranded RNA virus within endosomes or vesicles in cells. Through a complex pathway, TLR7 in women cells stimulates B lymphocytes, women body rather, stimulates B lymphocytes to produce IgG antibody against novel coronavirus in the body of women. Now, coming to the attempts for devising vaccines against COVID-19. More than 200 vaccines have been formulated by different countries. And 31 vaccines have entered into different phases of clinical trial. But uh, although uh, nobody knows how many of those will actually be able to protect mankind against infection by novel coronavirus. A few days back, I saw in the television, World Health Organization stated more than half of those vaccines did not get good results in clinical trials. Anyway, let me talk about a few prospective vaccine candidates. In this uh, slide, it is about America's Moderna vaccine, America's uh, Moderna vaccine prepared by Moderna Biotech. Technically, it is a macromolecular vaccine called mRNA-1273. It is a synthetic mRNA, messenger RNA capable of producing spike protein of novel coronavirus. This RNA has been chemically made stable and then enclosed in lipid nanoparticles for being used as vaccines. Phase one and two clinical trials have, all, have shown its ability to produce IgG antibody against novel coronavirus in human body and this antibody was also fine to inactivate destroy novel coronavirus in in vitro studies phase three clinical trial is in progress china's can sino biologics prepared a vaccine called ad 5 n cop it is a replication defective human adenovirus, a human adenovirus that cannot multiply. The gene for spike protein of novel coronavirus has been introduced in its genome by genetic engineering. When injected in human body, these replication defective or multiplication defective adenovirus enter into antigen presenting cells of body and produce spike protein of novel coronavirus. These spike proteins come out of those cells and stimulate B lymphocytes in spleen and limb glands to produce antibody against novel coronavirus. And they uh, uh, also uh, this uh, spike protein also stimulates the production of memory cells in human body. 
phase three clinical trial has already been started in the month of July in Brazil. Now, Oxford's COVID-19 vaccine, CHADOX-1, is under phase three clinical trial. This vaccine created a lot of hype in social media and uh, electronic media, especially uh, televisions. It is an added attenuated vaccine, like the Chinese ad 5 n cov vaccine. The only difference is that the principle is same. The only difference is that the virus used here is a replication defective or multiplication defective chimpanzee adenovirus instead of human adenovirus. Uh, it is unfortunate by true that it came in some uh, journal of uh, about two or three months back that this vaccine has been badly criticized by renowned immunologists because monkeys receiving this vaccine fail to avoid being infected by the NCOP, although they did not develop any severe form of pneumonia. At present, doses have been modified to get success, and phase three clinical trial is on. Now, India's first COVID-19 vaccine, Bharat Biotech India Limited of Hyderabad and National Institute of Virology, Pune, under Indian Council of Medical Research, jointly produced a COVID-19 vaccine called Covaxin. It is an inactivated viral vaccine or killed viral vaccine. NIV, National Institute of Virology, isolated a strain of the novel coronavirus from an asymptomatic COVID-19 patient and transferred it to Bharat Biotech in May 2020. Then Bharat Biotech inactivated this virus with beta propiolactone to obtain the inactivated vaccine or killed vaccine. Phase one clinical trial on a few hundred volunteers began uh, in July, on July 13th. BBIL, Bharat Biotech India Limited, reported to journalists that they had got satisfactory results on the effectiveness of their vaccine in laboratory animal models also. Now, phase three clinical trial will begin from October, coming October, in UP, Punjab, etc. states. Now, we talked a lot about the nature of the disease. Now, what precautions should we take? Firstly, everyone probably everybody in the country now knows that we should use a mask whenever we are leaving our house. However, mask with a valve or filter is not recommended for general, uh, for regular use, not uh, in all places, but it is not recommended for regular use in a confined place. Whenever you are sitting alone or staying alone, or you are uh, uh, walking in a uh, uh, street or any place where no other person is there, it is not unsafe for anybody to wear a mask with a valve or filter. But when you are traveling in a bus or a taxi or when 
you are in a con uh, in an operation theater or any confined place where many other people are there it is not advisable to wear a mask with a valve because when we are exhaling air when we are giving out air from our lungs due to air the air pressure inside the mask increases and due to that increased pressure the valve opens outwards the valve of the mask opens outward therefore if the person has got any infection by corona virus the viral particles may spread uh, outward along with the exhaled air or expelled air to maintain social distancing is another compulsory duty of everybody cdc or center for disease control usa has i have said that have mentioned already said that they have mentioned a distance of 6 feet should be maintained in between two persons while people are gathering at any place for any meeting or any other purpose thermal gun or thermal scanners should be used in airport railway stations metro stations <coughs> people with body temperature above 38 degree centigrade or 100.4 degree centigrade should not be allowed should be prevented from traveling <clears throat> whoever spends a long time on the streets especially the policemen the security guards drivers should try to wear face shield and head cover in addition to masks and we have to wear gloves while traveling by bus taxi or car and also while driving a car and as you all know after coming back from outside office market shop bank post office etc we should wash our hands properly up to the elbows and also the face with soap then we have to rub our four hands with sanitizer containing it is better that the a sanitizer contains isopropyl alcohol if not so it should contain 80% ethanol at least and try to carry a bottle or pouch a bottle of sanitizer with you while traveling or going to office bank atm etc and it is known that doctors nurses hospital staff ambulance staff they must wear ppe it is known but it should be noted that such ppe after use should not be discarded uh in some uh, places where other people may come in contact with those left out ppe uh, such news uh, sometimes not frequently but sometimes come out in newspapers that ppe uh, used ppe has been found to be left on the sides of streets or even in some renowned hospitals of the state elderly people sick people and children should stay at home as much as possible and go out of home during urgency only bank employees should use uvc ultraviolet c containing currency note sanitizers in order to sanitize the notes and people should always remain very cautious when we are gathering 
whenever we are attending any public gatherings, we should try to avoid public gatherings as much as possible. But sometimes it is not possible while going to temple, while going to any marriage party or any festival party, we should always remain cautious and try to maintain social distancing from other people attending the same function. Herd immunity or community immunity is still far away from sight. Community immunity means when more than half of the people of a society have uh, developed immunity against a disease. Such situation is still far away from sight. Indian Council of Medical Research or ICMR conducted an antibody study, antibody testing or sero survey in randomly chosen uh, people in 69 districts of the country in June 2020. Results of a few of the districts have been published so far. In case of Kolkata, it was found that only 57, that is 14.4 percent out of 396 tested asymptomatic people showed antibody against novel coronavirus in their blood. In five other districts of West Bengal, antibody was detected in negligible in less than 3% people, tested people. A similar sero survey was carried out in Delhi by National Center for Disease Control in June to middle August. And this study showed a bit better result, showed the presence of antibody in 29% of the total population of Delhi. Therefore, development of herd immunity or community immunity seems to be far away from sight, but it may not be absolutely impossible in uh, near future or in coming future. Coming to the final slide, giving relief to the impatient listeners. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. I am very sorry due to some technical problems. I was unable to join the webinar in time despite repeated attempts from 4.20. Uh, anyway, take care of yourself. Please do not forget to use masks, use sanitizers, and always try to maintain social distancing wherever you go. And I wish that you all stay safe and healthy. I continue my lecture at it uh, stop presenting in no time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your kind words and sharing this valuable information regarding this awareness of COVID-19. Now I request the listeners, if anyone have question, uh, you can ask. I think uh, no question, sir. OK, now uh, we are at the end of the session. Uh, now I request Ms. Bandana Vasu, librarian of Brainware University Central Library, to conclude this webinar with both of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, so many controversy about the wearing mask. So what, uh, rather than N95, what kind of mask we can wear? I'm 
Am I audible? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Microphone got off. Okay, I, okay, okay, sir. Uh, okay. Those who can afford to buy should try to buy N95 or equivalent uh, type of mask. But the mask should not have any filter. Uh, whenever you are going to some crowded place, suppose you are sitting in an office where the other people are working, or you have gone to some uh, festival, some festival party or function where where other people are there. It is not advisable to use a mask with a filter because while uh, giving out air from our lungs, the pressure inside the mask increases and along with the outgoing air, viral particles, if already present in the body of the person, will go out. Achha. Now, one thing. If one cannot buy a N95 mask, he or she can merely use cloth net masks. But it should it is advisable that the mask should have three layers so that because uh, the pore size in cloth is bigger than nitrile which makes n95 or kn95 mask due to this bigger pore size in ordinary cloth it is advisable that use such mask cloth made masks you can use merely but it should be three layered uh, so that viruses that may somehow percolate, pierce through the outermost layer, get entrapped by the middle layer, and those which can percolate through the middle layer even, gets entrapped by the final layer. So it will not, uh, the efficacy, efficiency, uh, filtering efficiency of N95 is 95%. That's why it's known as N95. Uh, and ordinary cloth mask, if it is three layered, it is uh, it can filter out more than eighty or eighty five percent of the particles. So I don't think that it will make a, a even and hell difference. Okay, could you hear me? Okay, okay thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thanks to all uh, listeners and all organizers of Brainware University. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very sir. much. So can I leave now? No, sir. Just wait. Thank you so much. Sir, just you, wait, sir. Oh, sir. Just. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks. Now I request Ms. Vandana Vasu, librarian of Brainware University Central Library, to conclude this webinar. With vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, a very good evening to all associated with our ninth webinar. Uh, COVID 19. I'm audible. Ah, okay, you okay, okay. COVID 19. Uh, actually, many people are doing webinar on this issue. However, this issue is still now very important to us. And as an information center, we feel the responsibility to ever about this COVID-19. I think from this presentation, the present situation and future of COVID-19 is clear to us. Thank you, sir, for your precious speech. Uh, now we have reached end of the session. And the session is vote of thanks. At first, I would like to thank our Honorable Chancellor, sir, our VC, sir, and Principal Brainer Group of Institutions and Department of Allied Health Science for their heartiest support. And uh, again, I would like to thank Dr. Nirmal Kumar Sharkar for this informative presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome. And thanks to everybody of Brainwear University. Next, I would like yeah. to thank our entire Brainwear group of institutions and Brainwear University team, library team, 
and last but not the least i would like to thanks to our all participants who make our webinar success so thank you all thank you very much and thank you choiti for moderation thank you sir thank you all excuse thanks me to everybody uh, ma'am ma oh. ma all right i can leave now